Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. We're going to be talking about the Cold War zombie easter eggs and how to complete all of them in a like speed run fashion essentially. So this would be the easiest way to get these easter eggs done, the fastest, quickest guide. You're going to want to get power turned on, build pack a punch, you know, like as we would do on any map and then we're going to move on. Once you got that step done, you're going to want to find an anomaly that spawns in the map after you get pack a punch built. Once you've done that, you're going to get the option to be able to pick up these parts, which are the ether scope parts. They're in the same location, but but they are random before you pick up the last one you're gonna want to take the dogs that you have chasing you're gonna have a few spawn in whenever you pick up a part run over to this little chamber here and you're gonna want to pre-fill this up basically what you're gonna want to do is get this filled up with the gas that comes off the dogs and we're gonna use that later once you're done with that pick up the part um, right next to that little teleport hole that's your last part um, you can build it on that table right next to where this megaton spawns Build that, make sure you have it, and then you'll be ready to uh, start onto the next step. There's gonna be a Megaton that spawns in on the immediate round after that. He's gonna drop a card. You're gonna pick that card up and take it over to the sensor that's in the room that we're walking into right now. Once you're there, there's gonna be a uh, like a panel on the door and you're just gonna wanna swipe it open the uh the keyboard thing up and you're going to get a sensor now that you've got the sensor and the scope built you're going to want to get the journal step so you're going to walk into the anomaly that's in the medical bay attempt the password that's on this computer you're going to get the password through the entries that we're about to get with the ghost anomalies as soon as you're done with this pick up the notepad that spawns on the desk you're going to go talk to the anomaly that's here which is another uh, like piece of the puzzle that we're going to have to do and you do have to interact with these so pick that one run over to here into the control room make sure that you uh interact with that guy and then we're going to go right back to where we got the uh original ether scope stuff so it's going to be right next to that megaton that we just fought we're going to run down there and there's going to be an anomaly once we interact with it we're going to want to zoot ourselves upstairs um, because we want to get the step with the die machine for the free wonder weapon done uh, with that sensor it's going to uh, detect a door that's going to suck up zombies once the zombies all get sucked up, you'll have the ability to discharge the door and you'll be able to grab the weapon. You're gonna need this weapon for basically every step after this. Once you've got the Wonder Weapon, there's gonna be a few locations for the upgrades of the Wonder Weapon that you're gonna need to do. The first one's gonna be a box that spawns actually right in this room. Uh, not in this room, but like on top of this room when we go up these stairs. Let's go to the here. There's gonna be a little box right uh, on that little ledge. You're gonna hit it and we're gonna pick it up in a second. Make sure you do uh, have the ability to suck because you need to suck this bottle towards you. You're going to go outside and then you're going to pick up a glass like a uh, jar that you had just shot off the roof. That was what was inside that box. Now that you finished all the ghost anomalies, you did get the password for the computer. So make sure that you do interact with that. Go to the anomaly that's in the pond area and you want the megaton that spawns in to shoot you. You want it to shoot the tree so that it starts dripping the sap off those mushrooms and then you're going to place that vial that you just picked up from the penthouse like uh, roof once you've done that uh while you're still in the dark ether make sure you place the fuse that's in the weapons lab where you pre-filled the canister earlier also put the canister down so you can get the gas that you filled up in that little tube earlier moving on to the electric uh upgrade you're going to want to go into the anomaly where you built the ether scope part and you're going to want to start sucking up the yellow lightning like uh like these like little yellow crystals that are glowing on this side first one's going to be here in the pond uh pick up the uh basically like the little jar that you placed for the juices you can switch over to the thermatic uh die uh, once you're walking by it's all all those three are in that one area so you might as well just knock them out while you're there now that you've got the uh charge saved uh you're gonna want to walk over to the box for the electric bolt um and you're gonna need to do this three times so uh, make sure you hit the charge in that little box stand close if you need to it sometimes you can miss it as you can tell in the video i i get used to to missing it a lot uh you can break the ice box by pressing square on that so it's going to break it open for you you can want to go over to the second location and crash site for the like yellow growing crystal uh glowing crystals again uh go over to here this is going to be your next upgrade your nova uh you're going to want to use this to basically what you're doing is you're getting all four of them to shoot at the bottom of the 
uh, the little circle tube and it'll have four little notches with colors that signify what you need to shoot where. So here you'll see I shoot the little bar, it, it's gonna go up um, and then we're gonna get the third location which is in the bedroom upstairs but you can suck it from standing in front of the stamina box right here. You wanna do all of these in the dark ether relatively fast so you don't have to go back into the dark ether. Uh, but once you get the last upgrade, you're gonna be able to switch over to the electric bolt. Shoot the electric bolt on the, the, the one of the locations on the bar, which is gonna be that far right one. Switch over to the ice box that you broke earlier, um, and then you'll be able to do the last and final upgrade to, to start the next step. Now that you've got the upgrades for the die done, we're actually going to get the wrench. So Anomaly is going to spawn in the medical bay, and you're gonna go up to this floor and start a conversation with an Anomaly that spawns in once you're, you're up here. You can do all of your upgrades if you want right now. You can just basically walk around free whatever you'd like once you're done with the cutscene they're gonna drop a wrench and you're gonna take this up to spawn where you first came in once you get to spawn there's gonna be a tank uh, you're gonna want to hit the tank three times with the wrench and there's going to be a zombie that spawns in through the top kill that zombie and use an explosive of any kind to put it on the tank and it's going to shoot the tank once the tank shoots it's going to hit a tree that's back here and you're going to pick up the gold ball that's in crash site um, it spawns there every time it just basically falls off the tree and then you're going to want to put it into the this red thing to start the next step the next step being that you need a, a megaton half so don't kill the megaton entirely just make sure that he splits in half and then you want to capture both of his halves you're basically containing him um, and then we're going to fuse him back into a person that's going to help us in the boss fight later a little tip here uh, once you start the purification process you can actually slide under that door so that you can get some of your upgrades done if you need any uh, and then you're gonna go to the anomaly that's at the uh, the outpost and you're gonna stand at this table for the next anomaly which basically kind of just going through conversations to be able to get to the boss fight once that's done a photo is gonna spawn in um, and this is the no point of no return so you're basically gonna grab the the photo and it's gonna start the boss fight once you're in the boss fight Make sure you've got some some uh, like some kill streaks or anything you can. If you you know if you can have the death machine or anything, it's nice to have. Uh, Ring of fire is the best. Um, and basically, just just hold out for your own. A lot of stims. Uh, make sure you split the megaton so that you get ammo for your die. Uh, I personally like the electric bolt, but this boss fight is actually very easy. Um, if it takes you a little bit, just take your time. Uh, let, make sure that you protect him so that he can do the steps that he needs. And it's really easy. You, you're gonna. This is probably one of the easiest Easter eggs. It was the first one that they released in this game, and it was. It's it very, very easy. It's all basically a bunch of subtitles. Um, other than that, once that's done, you're just going to make your way up to the uh, Xville location, which is going to be in Pawn. Once you've made your way to Pawn, this is going to be the end of the Easter egg. Raptor 1 is going to come and pick you up, and then you're going to get a little piece of extra dialogue that uh, usually you won't get at the Xville. So that's the end of the Easter egg. All right, on to the next one is the Firebase Z map. Uh, this one's relatively simple. The boss fight's very easy, and the only step that's really annoying is the mimic step, uh, mainly because you have to kill them to like a certain degree and then capture them. Uh, so you might sometimes you might accidentally kill them, and then you have to roll around and then find another one and do it again. That's really the only tedious part. Um, on round four, the easiest way to get power done and roll rounds uh, basically to where you're ending around when power is basically being finished is kill six of them on round four um, and then start the process at the first power, second power, and then finish on third and you'll roll the six. Uh, once you're done with that, before you go and talk to Pick, make sure you get some stamina up just so you're zooming around the map, make it easier. Um, Basically, the first step is talking to Rezanov, going to Peck, and then back to Rezanov to get a card. So you're basically going to go back and forth. That's why you might as well. It's best to just get stamina. Once she's done with that, you're going to speak to Rezanov, and he's going to give you a card. Once you get that card, you're going to want to take it through basically the map, and you're going to get these vials that have uh, specific things that you're going to fuse together. So you're going to pick up the card. You're going to run through the map. The first one's going to be in this spawn area right here in the courtyard. Make sure you do get a pistol. This is going to actually be in hand later. Um, just try to get that pistol whenever you can. Um, you can buy it now or you can buy it later, but you're going to need it for a step later. Uh, that's your first file. This is going to be your second vial, which is in the an engineering on the first floor. And then the last one's in the colonel's office uh, in this little locker. 
Uh, once you've got all three of those, you're going to make your way over to the uh, like the weapons area, this little field hospital, and it's going to uh, stir them together, call in some dogs, and then you're going to kill them and then pick up the uh, this is like a, like a yeah an aerosol delivery system. And with that aerosol delivery system, with the vials that you just fused together, you're going to put it on that vent and make your way over to this little back area, which is the scourge defense. And you're going to grab the shovel that's in this little hut. It spawns there every time, um, so it's just, you know, it's not random. You don't have to find it. Pick up this note, and then you're going to take the eye from this character because you need it to unlock a computer here in a minute. Now that you've got the eye, uh, Dr. Peck has probably talked enough to the point where we can interact with him. Uh, the the thing that we put in his vent basically drugged him to give us information for the next step for the Easter egg. Make sure that you have a dartboard handy. Uh, take a picture of it on your phone or draw one out. It's really simple. Uh, because you're going to need it for this computer step with the eye that you just put in. So the eye basically unlocks the computer and then the computer is going to give us a code. Uh, three numbers, um, basically in a counterclockwise or clockwise uh, like rotation. So the first one was 18 and then this one's going to stop at 4. And then when it goes back around you'll see that it stops again um, and it'll stop at where 11 would be essentially so make sure you pick up the key that spawns underneath the desk that comes out pick it up and then you're going to walk over to, to the data center once you've gotten the code written down and you have the key you can do this step in the process of while you're waiting for peck to talk um, and then once he's finished talking peck's going to tell you to go ahead to the data center and there's going to be a uh uh, like an equipment item that you can pick up. This equipment is basically a capture trap. It's going to trap in mimics once you find them. Uh, once you're running around, if you ever make your way back to spawn, use the code that you got from that computer um, in the order that you got it. So 18411 was my code. Once you're done shooting it, make sure you hit the bullseye so that it opens up and then you'll get uh, one of the parts for the Ray K. Once that's done, um, basically you're just going to want to find the mimics that spawn in and they do hide. So like that guy, he was hiding in a chopper uh, five or six times to the chest. will get them low enough to the point where you can capture them. Once you pick them up, you'll be able to take them back to the spot that you picked up the equipment. Um, and it's going to give you a code and you need to do this three times. So you'll have this guy. Um, I think it's like Zokolov, Brahms and Sabim or something like that. Um, and then that's basically the, the characters that you need because you might get a different character, you might get the wrong character, and you'll have to find another one and then redo it again. Um, if you get lucky though, um, you should be okay. Uh, go to these lockers with the key that you unlocked from the computer earlier in the, uh, in the Easter egg, and it's going to spawn in Mimics, and this is going to give you one of the last parts for the, the Ray K. Once you've got the Ray K part, you're going to run back over, insert the uh, memory, like the memory transference thing, uh, and then it's going to give you the code for the Easter egg. Once you get the code, you'll be able to move on to the next step um, of this Easter egg. And at this point of the Easter egg, you do not need the trap, but I like to use it to trap the uh, zombie on the match because this next part, when you're trapped in a little uh, like bubble, it's best to not roll around um, and just stay on like a low round so that you don't really have to worry about anything. Once you get the data card, you're going to want to take it over to the planning offices and insert it to this machine to, to basically start the next process. Uh, the OPC is going to open up. You're going to walk in here and it's going to do like a little countdown. Once the countdown is completed, uh, you're going to find out that it needs more steps essentially. So we're going to get a code from our characters. They're going to give us a th four digit code and we are going to interact with the locker that's right here. And once you've interacted with it, it's going to open up and drop a sensor for you. And you're going to take that over to the jungle defense and start the crystal steps. During this jungle step, a mangler is going to spawn in. Uh, be sure to like uh, shoot the arm off. You don't have to kill it by, sh by shooting the arm, but just make sure that the arm explodes so that he drops the barrel or the clip for your reiki. You do need this for the next step. And try to stay, uh, like for instance, I started this round on round 10. Try to stay on round 10 with either that captured zombie that you have or just keep one zombie alive. Uh, run over to this chamber right here and you're going to basically uh, insert the crystal that you just got and you're going to drop off the um, the clip that you just picked up from that guy's arm. Try to do it on round 10 so that by the time uh, round 12 comes you're able to pick it up so you don't have to basically keep flipping around to get it. This step, a little confusing. You're basically looking for 
You're looking for a, a crystal that has no smoke on it. You want to find a crystal that's basically just floating inside. All of these have like a black smoke around it. And you'll notice uh, right here, the one that I do pick up is just, it's just like a white smoke. It's not, it doesn't look like it's like being damaged or anything. Once you find that one, uh, go to the next, basically the power section of where you updated the power um, and then interact with it so you can do the second crystal. Uh, round 12 should be done by now. You'll be able to get your charged battery and then build the Ray K. And then this is the step for the third and final crystal location. Um, you need to be on the toggle mode that does the tornado on the Ray K. Uh, interact with this spot in the barracks. It's going to spawn in the crystal and you're going to trap it and catch it. Uh, same thing as the other ones. Once you get the like the canister, you're going to go over to here and get some of these pieces of the of the little power like the power section. And that's basically all the upgrades for the uh, for the crystals. And once you've done that, the OPC is going to say that it's powered up and ready to go again. And the stabilization or whatever is in progress. And you'll be able to essentially start the boss fight. Um, but before you do that, there's going to be one small step with the satellites. Uh, keep a zombie alive, just one. Um, and then basically, you're just going to go through this sap process. You're looking for the star that has like a question mark on it, as you can see right there. Um, and basically during this step, it's going to be like a two or three minute process. So you might as well just do your upgrades buy the cruise missile, buy your death machine, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, during the boss fight, I personally like the cruise missile because once the health gets around to the, the O and Orta, I just use the Christmas, uh, cruise missile and it basically finishes the boss fight. Um, as you can tell in this little boss fight clip, I think I finished this boss fight in like 30 seconds or something. So it's actually a really, really, really easy Easter egg. Um, if you see any of the zombies coming in, use ring of fire um, and just shoot down and in front. So basically you're hitting him with the bullets that are going through them. Once you get his health down to, you know, that th three quarters down, you can use that last quarter of life and just take him out with the, uh, the cruise missile. So easy as that. Um, that was the easiest probably the easiest boss fight that you'll do in any of these easter eggs moving on to the outbreak steps this is going to be the locations for all of the uh steps that we're going to be doing um so just keep this part of the outbreak uh like the this part of the video saved for the for the map sections uh you'll be able to have to go back here it's all color coded so you'll be able to find the like the places that you need uh pretty quick so you don't have to go online you know and do all that extra stuff so before you even start the match, uh, go to World 1, uh, finish the objective, and then either skip by hitting the portal to jump to World 3, or uh, just go 1, 2, and 3, and then uh, basically the only way you can start these uh, Easter eggs for these Outbreak objectives is on World 3. Moving on to the start of the objective for Outbreak's uh, first Easter egg is the unknown signal location so this is the side quest for the beginning of the easter egg on world three you're going to find an unknown signal projector or like an amplifier you've got to match the radios to the signal that it's giving out on the subtitles which is like five or two once you pick up the device after matching them make the call to respond to maxis and it'll go through a dialogue go to the next world and you'll find uh monkeys that spawn in uh randomly and if you shoot them, sometimes it'll drop the slide if you get it on your first try, which is luck. Um, and, and then in the same world, every map has a projector. So you're going to use those slides, go through the uh, basically the prompt of the slides. So you'll be able to stand there for, I think, like a minute or two um, and advance the slides to change basically, uh, basically what's going on in the dialogue of the thing. And then once you start the next objective for the next world once you go into world five it's automatically going to take you to the uh to this map which is like i think the ruka map or something like that um and then once you go down to the tonal silos it's automatically going to start your uh easter egg which is operation inversia now that you've made your way into the silo go to a and make your way to the first floor and you're going to initiate a cutscene to basically start this easter egg uh, it's basically like an initiation uh, like a point of no return uh, to basically get this Easter egg started. You're going to go down here and then Rezanov going to spawn in and you guys are basically going to have this conversation. I won't show the uh, cutscene on the screen um, just in case there's any spoilers or anything like that. Uh, go through the cutscene. Uh, at this point, you can go to the bathroom if you want, if you want to take a break or anything like that, because it is going to, uh, it's going to get a little hectic. Now that you've gone through the cutscene for Rezanov, you're going to know that you need keys to prep the missiles for Rezanov to get the missile shot. 
Um, the first key is going to be on a red mimic that spawns in in the main floor of uh, basically this, uh, like the spawn area that you came down in on. Uh, it's going to be on a guy. Red mimic's going to spawn out of him. Just kill him and pick up the key. While you're in A on the first floor, you're going to get the monkey trap for the second key. Um, this essence trap has a banana tied to it, so we're going to be tricking a monkey to giving us the second key. Uh, locating vents around A, um, and only in A the, the, the monkey will spawn so you don't get confused running around. Uh, once you throw the trap in front of the vent that you see him come out of, run away so that he comes back out, um, and then you'll be able to trick him. Pick up the key once you've trapped him into it. I'm pretty sure you have to interact like a double X or double up, whatever your key is for it. Now that you've got the monkey in the trap, go and pick it up and you'll be able to get the second key and move on to the third and final key step. For the last key, this one's going to be a little bit more of a process to get. Uh, a bottom floor of B, there's going to be a Ethereum Harvester to pick up. Uh, interact with it, it's going to start like being able to suck in shards that you're going to pick up from purple crystals that you can shoot. Um, in this little silo, if you go down here, they can't sh uh, like come at you. They won't throw uh, meatballs at you or anything like that. So you can come in here, go in a circle, and then keep doing this in a loop if you want it to be the easiest. Because I know that this step of the Easter egg is real tedious and you don't want to lose it because you're almost kind of near the end, essentially. Once you've got the canister all filled up, uh, you'll be able to interact and pick it up, essentially. You're going to go upstairs, go back to the, like, the main hall, like the little hub that you usually go through. Once you go through there, go to D and you're going to go uh, to the second floor, essentially. So you're going to go down the stairs and there's going to be like a little puddle of blue stuff. Make sure that you do the... Uh, like field upgrade in this location then the jelly is essentially gonna suck you in once you're going through the jelly Just hit your interact button um, until you pick up the key You'll see it pop up on your screen But if you don't see it just look up and down and around and you'll see it sometimes It's a little tricky to find and then once you've got all the keys you're gonna do a pattern sequence um, located on the boards like these little switch boards right here a B and C if you look closely, there's three little logos that have uh, an A, B, and a C. Um, so basically go in the order um, that they're lit up. So for me, I actually got lucky. The first spot for the launch key was green. So uh, when I inserted the launch key, that was the first spot that I needed. The next one's B, and then the last one's going to be C. So you could get it to where C is green uh, on the first spot. Um, and then that would essentially be the place that you would need to do it first. If C has it in the second spot, that's the second key location. And you do have to do it in order, um, or you have to reset it. Moving on to the boss fight, make sure that you've got your weapons upgraded to the highest rarity. You've got it maxed pack, uh, focus on his chest, the entire boss fight. Once you go into the crouching position, which is like this, focus on the orbs. There's going to be three of them. Sometimes they line up, so you'll be able to do them together. Once you finish this boss fight, this will be essentially like the hardest Easter egg in the entire guide. So congratulations, and I, uh, I hope you got this far. <laughs> Moving on to outbreak number two on world three. This is going to be the next uh, Easter egg side quest, essentially. So once you've gone to world three on outbreak on a new match, uh, find the red portal. You're going to go through it and then it's going to throw you in the air and you need to find another red portal and do this a total of three times. Once you've done this, uh, there's going to be like a little beacon again that spawns out so that you can call on the portal again once you finish the world that you're on. And again, once you've done all three, you're going to see the red like streak of the beacon that falls in. Make sure that you follow it, pick it up so that you can interact with the portal once you've done uh, your objective for the world that you're currently on. Pick it up um, and then you'll be able to basically move on to the, the beginning of this Easter egg. So that's basically the quest to get it started, essentially. As soon as you interact and teleport, you're automatically going to be thrown into Sanatorium and Operation... Uh, I'm not even going to try and say that, uh, but yeah, once you've done that, you're going to make your way up to the carved hills to the helicopter crash site on the bottom left of the map. Interact with the radio that's hanging outside of it once you've secured the crash site. Uh, there's basically just going to be a bunch of zombies that spawn in. You'll need to kill all of them before you can interact with the radio that's hanging on the side of it. Uh, if you run up to it before you secure it or there's one hanging around or something like that, kind of like in this instance, I had this guy just hiding in the corner over here. Once you get that done, you'll be able to interact with it and get the dialogue to start onto the 
next step essentially now we're going to be moving on to the ether bunny step this is going to be spawning in at any of the mystery boxes on sanatorium so there's a spawn that spawns here for the mystery box or there's that one that's on the top of sanatorium you know yada yada uh, once you've done the like basically cleared out all of the zombies that spawn in you'll be able to pick this ether bunny up and then we're going to be taking it to a rover here in a little bit uh, i like carrying it on my back because the field upgrade that you get from it's pretty cool um, once you've done that you're going to look for a red orb that spawns in on the map um, on that those maps that i had previously in the video you can be able to find the locations for these i think there's only three or four of where this guy can spawn in once you find it, you're going to shoot it into the direction of the bridge that the rover is on, which is the main bridge in the map. Once you've done that, uh, the orb and the bunny are going to be go placed inside of that cart, and then it's going to basically initiate the, the point of no return for this Easter egg. So before you interact with this cart, make sure you've got the upgrades you've liked, the perks that you want, and all of that. Uh, once you interact with it, the orb, the, the red orb is going to slam into the cart, and it's going to smash out the radio that you need to start the, essentially the, 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 like the dialogue to get the Easter egg rolling. Once you've done that, there's going to be a blue orb that spawns in like around the cart, and you're basically going to be escorting it to the spot that gets you to the next step of the Easter egg. Interact with the cart and it's going to start the operation, you know, however you can say that word. Once you've done that, uh, you're going to walk it through, basically protect it as much as you can. Try not to let any of the Tempest shoot it because if it does, it's going to damage it and then it stops it from moving. So then it just makes, you know, the, this step a little bit harder than it needs to be. Other than that, this step is tedious, but it's actually really easy. Um, they make it pretty wide so you can just keep moving, don't get trapped in anything. Now that you've completed the escort, you're going to make your way up the stairs and go up the escalator, the elevator, the zip line, whatever you want to do. Uh, make your way to the top of this building and then interact with the card that's up here and then also interact with the radio. And then you're going to get the cutscene basically that's going to start the exfil for this Easter egg. Yeah, uh, no boss fight, nothing like that. It's a very easy Easter egg. It's basically just an exfil. Protect yourself. You have, I think, about five minutes or something like that. There is an order that spawns in, so it's best if you have like Ring of Fire or Death Machine, something like that. Once you've got through the uh, through the hardest part, which is basically this part of the Easter egg, um, you'll be you'll be on home stretch, and then this would be Outbreak Number Two's uh, Easter egg basically complete. So go through, run around in circles, make sure they don't get trapped up in anything. There's not like a barrier or anything that you can't walk or run in. Uh, make sure you go through, run through. Um, the order is the last guy that I shoot at. Um, I try not to focus on him too much until I get like down to five or six characters. Um, at least take out the mimics and the manglers so you're not getting blasted every you know two or three seconds. Once you've done that, you can take out the death machine and use Ring of Fire for the extra damage, um, and then basically just you know melt the order. Other than that, this is probably going to be one of the easiest Easter eggs, other than I think the fire base Z's uh, boss fight. So, other than that. I hope you liked this Easter egg. Um, it was, it was pretty, you know, it was a letdown when this when this came out. So moving on to the second of the last Easter egg, this is the Mauer der Toten Easter egg. To get power turned on, uh, you're gonna need to grab the fuses that drop from Tempest. On the way to the power switches, they're gonna be random drops. Uh, you just kill the Tempest that spawns in, grab the fuse that he drops. You're gonna need two of them. Head down to the switch open up the gate um, after the switch. Sometimes you get lucky and you can find both the Tempest before you get to the switch and turn it on. And then after that, once you get both of the switches, you're gonna turn it on and then you're gonna make your way over to the Pack-a-Punch area to start off the Pack-a-Punch uh, machine. Once you're here, uh, you're gonna turn on it on and a Disciple's gonna spawn in. While the Disciple's spawning in, I like to look for the satellite dish that you're gonna need for a later step. During the pack punch step, all of the members that spawn in with the Disciple will die if you kill him directly, so you don't have to do it unless you want the extra points. I usually don't bother with them because the points you don't really need if you're just kind of, you know, breezing through this map real quick. Once you've got the satellite dish, put a brain rod of ammo mod on any of the weapons that you have, and then head over to Hotel Room 305 across from the Juggernaut machine. Once you brain rod a zombie in this room, it's automatically going to break open a door for the 
uh, for you to be able to grab these hands to build claws at a later step. Following that, the next round, uh, a Kranzi soul that's going to spawn in, and he is going to drop a battery pack, which is going to be used to build the rest of claws. Once you go over to there, you're going to power him up and give it about 30 seconds for him to load up. He's going to go through a dialogue, and then you're going to command him into this little room. Uh, to start killing zombies you're basically needing to power him up to get a uh, like an upgrade so that he can do something for us at a later step across from the area that we were just working in there's going to be a locker that we can take him to in the switch control room he's going to break open the locker and give you a black light the first code's going to be in the garment factory and the second one's going to be in the service passage the third one's going to be in the store across from the berlin street and when you're looking for the codes, they might be random. They're in the same rooms, but random locations in that room. Uh, so if you can't find it the first time, just take sure, uh, make sure you're looking up and down. Sometimes they spawn on like a chalkboard, uh, like in a, in, you know, on an aisle or something, something random. Once you get the code entered into the safe in the hotel room 305, get about 20 kills so that you can get the upgrade for the Wonderous, uh, Wonder Weapon Cerberus, which is the blazer. And then you're gonna head back into spawn and shoot the antenna so that a piece falls from it. And this is going to be a piece for the antenna of the headpiece that you are gonna add to claws later. Uh, head over to the store, shoot any of the radios with the blazer, uh, and eventually the second piece is going to fall out for him. And then head into the subway, look for the box on either side of the subway with the little light, and uh, shoot that electrical box to get the um, like the board that he needs. And also using the Cerberus weapon, you're going to melt the door and the sewer access to get to the boss, uh, like the boss room area. As soon as you walk through the door, the round is going to roll, and then you're going to be stuck in here for a full round uh, the round is really easy you're just gonna have some red tempest spawn in make sure you kill them and then eventually you're going to be able to pick up these glass vials and then uh, shoot this little panel right here with the wonder weapon uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter what mode it's in but uh, shoot that pick up two of these little trap lures these little like station things and then pick up the vials that uh, come out of that uh, the little tube that spawns in with the lure trap and the vials you're gonna find harvesters located around the map which are these little green boxes put the vial inside the harvester and then throw down the lure trap and it's going to spawn in a uh, tempest once the tempest do come in make sure that you are uh, killing them kind of close to this harvest so that you can collect their souls for the step coming up later now that you've got the harvesting spots uh, all done with the souls for the tempest you're going to call claws back in and place the satellite dish that you picked up earlier on the upgrade station for him. We'll know if he's ready to be placed in the machine because the TV on top of this little thing will be red or green. If it's green, you can call him in, uh, place him at that machine, and he'll automatically walk in there. The lockdown's really easy, so you know, don't worry about it. It's simple. It's only a minute long, and then uh, it's like a few disciples. Real simple. Once you're done upgrading claws, head back downstairs to the harvesting stations that you had upgraded these souls at, and then you're going to pick it up and take it to the place that you originally got the vials from so basically you picked up the vials got some souls and then we're going to be taking it back to the spot that we uh, originally picked it up from once you're down here if you haven't done the third station for the harvesting location you can uh, pick up the other lure that you need uh, like the third lure because you can only hold two at a time once you've done that you can go and do the third location if it's the furthest for me in this video it was the furthest so i usually do that one second or uh like first or second just so i get it out of the way and then usually what i end up doing is i do the the one that's the closest last so it's just a, a shorter walk basically because uh, you kind of your your walk is slowed just by a little bit when you're carrying it so usually what i end up doing is i do the furthest ones first and then i do the closest ones last you can use ether shroud like i did in the video so that you can keep your same walking speed once you're done with this step switch to ring of fire so that you can charge up the um, ring for boss fight um, it's nice to have once you're done with that you're going to head over to claws again in that little room that you built him in uh, give him his little upgrade and then you're going to walk over to the train station make sure that you do hit this little uh, control so that the train spawns in on the side that you need you're gonna place claws in front of the uh, the train track, and basically he's gonna he's gonna stop the train for you. Once claws gets into position, automatically the train's gonna spawn in, and you need to grab a key card and the bomb, uh, like a bomb holster that you're going to be charging up here in a later step. 
grab the key card, walk down across the train tracks into the uh, the area that we built claws in, and there's going to be a computer that we are going to the, uh, put that little key, uh, key card in. You're going to have to click square like a gazillion times, go through a bunch of dialogue, stuff like that. Once you're done with the dialogue, though, eventually a satellite's going to pop up on the screen, and that's going to call in... Um, like an HVT or like a high value target, and then you'll be able to uh, move on to the next step. At this point, the best thing to do is get some perks, uh, upgrade your weapon if you need to. Once he comes in, uh, you're gonna wanna split him, and then he's gonna drop these two rocks. These two rocks are gonna be used to craft at a building table on either side of the map. Um, you can either build it at the table by um, here, right here in the military tent by the spawn area that we first passed by, or on the other side of the map in the military tent just like this. Take it up to the ladders on the roof and then you'll be able to place um, like the uranium uh, like little thing that we just crafted. You're gonna do this twice, go back to the table, craft it again and then throw it on a zip line on this side. I always go to this table because the zip lines are so close. Once you put it on the zip line, you're gonna get like the screen shaking and then two of them are gonna clash together. And you're gonna take the, the that stone that you just clashed together back to the subway station. Place it in the vial and you will be able to get the first half of the, the bond that essentially that you're building. Another computer is gonna be right here in the uh, like the spawn area next to the harvester and the pack-a-punch, stuff like that. Once the next HVD comes in, you'll be able to get the stones for the, uh, you know, for the second part. You're basically just going to do it twice. So once the HVT comes in, you'll be able to get the second set of stones, craft them at these tables, take it back up to the zip line. Um, like I was saying again, you're just going to do, uh, you're basically just doing this twice. Um, you're basically filling up the canister uh, that you need for the rocks that these make when these clash together. So you pick up the second stone that you need for the bomb that we're crafting down in the subway station. Once you head down into here, this is going to be the start of the boss fight. Make sure you have a lure trap, anything like that, so that you can get free ammo from the tempest that you spawn in uh, ring of fire is going to be the best so that uh, you can deflect the defense that she does which is like these yellow shards uh, ring of fire blocks any throwing attacks anything like that so it's usually the best one to have at the start of this thing and throughout this boss fight she's eventually going to teleport to a different area so you're going to take out like a big chunk of her life and then eventually she's going to spawn into a different area so whatever she turns into the red orb like a big glowing red ball don't shoot her don't waste the bullets uh, she's just going to spawn into a different spot of the map and then you'll have to follow her around attack her and then eventually she'll come back to this area when um when she comes back to this area, it's basically going to be the end of the uh, like end of the boss fight. So be prepared for the cutscene, all of that. Um, once that's done, there's also an extra area once the cutscene's done. So don't don't leave the game or anything like that. Go through the cutscene. You'll have to escort Claws uh, to take the bomb that you made, um, you know, to the exit of this game. So make sure that when you get to the end of the boss fight, that you help Claws get through, save some ammo, a death machine, anything like that. And then uh, that'll be the end of this one. Moving on to the last easter egg, this is going to be the Forsaken easter egg. Turning on power is going to be pretty simple, you're basically just going to be finding parts laying around the map. Uh, it's going to be like a fryer thing, or a TV. The first one I'm pretty sure that we pick up in this clip is a, like, a card or something like that. Basically, you're going to manufacture or build a teleporter so that you can move on to the next step where you're going to have to fight a, uh, it's like this big three-eyed monster, essentially. Um, but basically, once he comes in, you're just going to shoot him. Make sure you focus on his eyes. Uh, anything that, like any of his glowing eyes is his weak spot. Once he dies, the abomination will drop a max ammo so that you can refill the stuff that you just wasted, basically, on him. Go through the portal that he spawns. Um, that he opens up essentially once you kill him so that you can get to the uh, pack-a-punch machine. Once you get to the pack-a-punch machine, do do remember to add a ammo mod that's the electric ammo mod, the dead wire, because we're going to be using it in a step uh, coming up to turn on an arcade machine. Once you've done that, you're going to go through a cutscene with that red switch that's on that wall behind the pack-a-punch machine. Once you've done that, you're going to walk around the office next to the, um, like the Wonderfish machine walk around it there's going to be an abomination that spawns in and we're going to have to uh we're basically going to manipulate him into doing some things first things first have him run into this wall where there's a satellite hanging on the wall we're going to pick up the new uh, like a neutralizer container and then also he has a second attack where he shoots lightning make sure that he shoots this specific um 
like Vile or any of them. If you can get him to shoot any of those purple uh, crystal things that are hanging on the floor, that'll be the best uh, so that you can pick up the second crystal. Go into the fuel processing area, turn on any of the switches. Uh, any of them is going to work as long as you've done those steps. Get through the little holdout that this has, and it's going to drop the next piece of the neutralizer. And then we're going to use the Deadwire Ima mod at the arcade machine in the arcade. Get a uh, zombie to line up with it, and then he's going to electrocute it to turn it on. Once you've done that, you can walk up, interact with it, and then we're going to drive it over across to the... There's like an office where we picked up a part earlier. Go into here, uh, blow off this little vent, and then you're going to drive into here. Once you go into the back corner, blow it up, and then we're going to run over to the room and where we just blew up the wall, there's actually going to be a piece for us to be able to pick up, and that's going to be the last piece for the uh, neutralizer. Moving on to the next step for the crystal steps, you're going to need a flamethrower and in the next round a tormentor, uh, a flame tormentor is going to spawn in and you're going to pick up its heart with the damage that you did with the flamethrower. Uh, the next one's going to be the last and final crystal. It's going to be in Main Street, which is also another lockdown, essentially. Once you're done with that, you can pick it up, and then we can go assemble the, uh, the free wonder weapon, which is the crystal axe. In order to unlock the crystal axe, you're going to need to get five melee kills and feed some souls to it so that you can unlock it. Once you do get it, switch it to the pistol uh, like section, uh, whatever you know, whatever you need to do, transform it to the pistol mod, and then shoot these little orbs that spawn around these big uh, chunks. Pick up the crystal shards that spawn in, and then a uh, abomination is going to spawn in automatically. Make sure that you throw these shards in one of his glowing eyes, and then he will eat it. Uh, make sure he eats it entirely to go uh, down to his tail, and then you can kill him and then pick up the ammo shard that he drops. Essentially, we're filling up that, that neutralizer that we had just built, um, and then we're basically going to use that later in a step. Throw it in his mouth, make sure he eats it, consumes the whole thing, and then you can pick up the shard that he just dropped for you. You're going to have to do this three times. They are located just in the same area most of the time. Rooftop, spawn, and then that one that's kind of in that, uh, that little down tunnel area. But once you do it, you're going to pick up uh, all of these shards, and you're going to take it down to the crafting table that's in the middle of this road, which is on Main Street. Craft it at this table, and then this is going to be the beginning of the Easter egg, uh, the boss fight for the Easter egg. So make sure that you've got all of your stuff that you need, um, upgrades, perks, everything like that, because this is the point of no return. As you're walking this neutralizer down to the boss fight door, you're going to notice these red ethereum shards. Um, try to stay inside this circle because if you go outside of it, it one, doesn't move the neutralizer, and two, you get damaged pretty quickly. Uh, these shards are essentially going to be used as like fuel to keep this thing moving towards the door. So the shrink, the circle is going to be shrinking every time it loses, uh, like moves, loses more uh, like energy and gas. So make sure you fill it up. Try to stay in the bubble as long as you can before you go and run and pick up one of those shards. And then once you get to the end, you're going to have the table pack a punch. Make sure you buy a uh, death machine, some perks if you need anything like that, shields, everything like that. Once you get into the boss fight, focus on the shield damage. As soon as you get the shield damage completed, you can actually just run over, uh, find Maxis and fill up her essence level. Basically what you're doing is you're removing the defenses for him to be able to get damaged on his real health so the laser cannons the only one that can essentially take away the red bar health you're just damaging it to where you're opening it up for her to be able to charge up the laser and then you can actually damage him so go in her little circle make sure that you fill up the essence level for her to be able to charge your laser cannon and then you're gonna do that four times uh, you get him bound to half you're gonna get a cutscene once the cutscene's done you're gonna do it two more times and then that will be the end game cutscene God forbid you do die after his health bar goes away in this instance, once you get off the laser and if you die uh, in between the time of the cutscene and now, the cutscene won't like start until basically you'll you'll basically have enough time to reach the cutscene. So if you go down right here, it's not the end of the world. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this guide. Um, this is the last Easter egg and uh, we'll see you guys when we do the super Easter egg.